Niger's army has declared allegiance to the leaders of Wednesday's coup. The chief of staff has released a statement saying he doesn't want to see conflict within the armed forces. President Mohamed Bazoum was detained by members of his presidential guard. The group of soldiers appeared on television, blaming him for deteriorating security and economic mismanagement. Let's bring in our correspondent, Ahmed Idris. He is following developments from Abuja in neighboring Nigeria. And another twist in this coup, Ahmed, with the army doing an about turn and saying they support the coup leaders. Exactly. The same army that yesterday told the world that they will mutiny and return President Bazoum to office. The only reason they gave for not intervening was avoid bloodshed. And now, all of a sudden, 24 hours later, they are backing the coup. This lent credence to certain suggestions within Niger that the government of Mohamed Bazoum was doomed to fail, was planned, everything was planned. This further complicates matters in the country, complicates matters on different fronts. Complicate, number one, is for Bazoum and his family. Secondly, what is the fate of United, Nations, United States and French bases in um, uh, uh, Niger? And they have options now, to either to stick with Bazoum or abandon him and go with the current flow in Niger. And then certainly, it also complicates the negotiations process. Whatever uh, negotiation or mediation that is being proposed to end this crisis amicably will be uh, in a difficult mode right now, simply because they are holding Bazoum as a bargaining chip. Any intervention will probably lead to undesirable consequences there. And just before the army said that they were going to throw their support before coup leaders, we heard from the foreign minister who said that he still believes, he still thinks of President Bazoum as president. What's the potential here for, um, for this crisis to escalate, Ahmed, with, you know, two sides, one supporting the president, one supporting the coup leaders, and that being reflected on the streets of Niger too? Exactly. Uh, that is complicated for complication number five, simply because if the protesters go ahead with their plan to demonstrate on the streets of the capital and other major cities, that could lead to confrontation between them and the security forces, which probably could lead to blood, uh, uh, bloodshed. And there are also pro-coup supporters who want to go out onto, onto the streets and support the army for taking over or overthrowing President Mohamed Bazoum. That could also lead to clashes between the supporters of both sides. Well, the basic question is, how long will this continue? How complicated will it be? It will be very, very difficult and complicated in the next few days, in the next few weeks, and even months. Now, all of that rests on whether or not uh, pro-democracy forces externally and internally to take the risk and walk that extra mile to ensure that democracy is protected in Niger. That will be the key. And people will be working. These forces, United Nations, United States of America, Europe, ECOWAS, African Union, and other civil society organizations, whether or not they will come out and mass and walk the talk, the harsh words or the strong words we heard yesterday, whether or not they will be able to live up to that will be the key to resolving this crisis, either or violently. All right, Ahmed, thank you very much for that. That is Ahmed Idris with the latest from uh, Abuja in neighboring Nigeria. And apologies for the uh, poor sound, the poor connection at times there.